All right, guys, today's the day. I owe you a video. A while ago, is it a month? Maybe two months ago, I said, I was gonna show you guys how to do a mood board. I showed you guys my living room. I show you how it came to fruition and how to minimize costs, delays, etc., by creating a mood board. So in today's video, we're gonna go over all of that. First, we're gonna go over exactly what is a mood board. And then we're gonna talk about ways to create a mood board. I'm then gonna take you guys through my mood board and how I created my space. You guys know I've updated my living room. And if you don't know, welcome to my channel. I've updated my living room. So be sure to check out my first living room tour and my most recent living room tour and see the difference. And then lastly, I'll show you guys a quick demo of how to create a space using Canva. Bear with me guys, okay? Your girl's out of breath. Five months pregnant. Okay, I'm gonna try and break down this video into as simple of terms and process as much as possible. And I wanna make this a process that you're gonna actually wanna do because I promise you it's actually going to help. Take the time, create a mood board in advance, save money and time and headache down the line. Okay, so let's talk about what a mood board is. A mood board is pretty much a visual representation of a space or ideas that you have to design a space. You can actually make physical mood boards or you can make digital mood boards. Doing a digital route of a design board is a lot easier to navigate. You can change things around, modify things, see how things play together. And you know, it's just a lot easier. But by all means, if you want to do a physical one and grab your scissors and a good old magazine, I highly encourage that same rules apply. So pretty much you're gonna start with a collection of images. If you're designing a mood board for the purpose of inspiration, you're going to wanna gather a bunch of images, whether from Pinterest, Instagram, your favorite content creators, or your favorite designers. Also, if you go to places like Restoration Hardware, they always send out their catalogs. You can actually get a catalog and you can pick out design references from there. And you just wanna kind of curate a, a bunch of images together in one place. You wanna get the sense of designing a space that fits your vibe. So that's more of a inspiration mood board. If you have ideas in mind about the specific furniture that you want, which is more so what I'm gonna talk about in this video, you'll wanna gather more images of specific pieces of furniture. You really wanna curate rooms around bigger pieces of items. So either it's a wall color or a sofa or a rug. Try not to design spaces around pieces of furniture that can easily be swapped out, like a pillow. There's plenty of ways you can create a mood board. Again, like I said, you can do the physical route, get yourself some magazines and cutouts, or you can go the digital route. There's plenty of programs that you can use to create a mood board. You can start with places like Pinterest where you can just gather a whole bunch of images. I've done this before. I have boards called Scandinavian, Mid-Century Modern, Contemporary, and you just wanna gather like images that fit a vibe. And that way you can kind of determine your style. Once you start to pin a consistent style and look, you'll start to notice a pattern in your Pinterest board. And that's the easiest way to kind of identify what your style is if you don't already know it. Once you've nailed down your style, there are other programs like Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Milanote, Canva, which we'll talk about today. These programs are where you can actually begin to physically build out your own boards, your own interest boards, your own mood board. We want to explore styles. We want to explore textures, colors, but we we want to explore how they fit together. So that's the purpose of this board. I'm going to take you guys over to my computer in my bedroom and I will walk you through how I set up my mood board for my living room and then I'll walk you through a quick little design of how to set up one for yourself. All right, come on, let's go. Okay. Welcome, welcome back to my desk area. It's been a while since we've been here. If you guys haven't seen my desk tour, be sure to check it out. I'll make sure to link it up here. But before we jump into designing the space and how I designed my space in Canva, I do wanna talk a little bit about today's sponsor, Logitech. I took so much time designing this space over here in particular, and this was one of the last spaces in my room that I was designing, but I wanted it to kind of mesh well with the design that I already had in my space. So here I have the Logitech MX Keys for Mac, and I also have the Logitech MX Master 3S, which is perfect for my iMac set up here. So for the MX keys for Mac, the space gray and black design ties into the space that I have here. And with my MX Master 3S mouse, it also has a similar colorway in a space gray and black. So this colorway obviously ties in beautifully with my existing setup. So the mouse is super ergonomic with its design and function. It is literally designed to fit the comfort of your hand. It is very smooth and it has a lot of buttons on there that you can customize to enhance your Mac experience. So that's one of the huge perks about these products 
products is that they are designed for Mac, customized for you. Both products are an easy setup with the Mac. They're both set up through Bluetooth very seamlessly. Each product allows you to connect up to three devices. So you guys know that I also have my MacBook Pro here that I also use and I like to go on the go. So I love that I can take both of these products with me and it can easily transition from one computer to the next. I've been able to use my mouse with my iMac as well as with my MacBook and with my boyfriend's computer and easily switch between the three just by hitting the button on the bottom of the mouse. I love the low profile look of the keyboard. Again, I have a very modern clean look over here and I wanna keep it that way. The keys are set up very similar to a regular Mac keyboard, which is great. Again, it's a simple integration for your Mac devices. It's crafted for comfort. It clearly fits my aesthetics and it's literally designed to go anywhere. One thing that I do love about the keyboard here is that you can literally switch between two computers at the same time. So if you're using your iMac, you can type over here. And then if you have your MacBook Pro set up on a stand, you can easily switch by pushing this button over here and switch over to that other computer so easily. It also has a backlight, which is pretty cool. That also has a proximity sensor. So as soon as my fingers begin to touch the keyboard, the backlight will come on and it has like a nice little ambiance to the keyboard. And also it's great for function as well. One thing that I really do love is the ability to switch between the wheel function. You can have like a really fast and smooth scroll, or you can switch over to a little bit more of a slower, a more controlled scroll. I've shown my Logitech products before. Know that I actually really do love their products. And again, I want to thank them for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, so let's jump into Canva so I can kind of walk you guys through the design of my space. Hopping over into Canva. One thing I love about Canva is that it's a free program, so anyone can use it. I actually do pay for the membership. There are some benefits that come along with the membership. I believe it's $12.99 a month, but if you're just doing this on the whim and you want to use a free program, the one thing I love about Canva is the fact that you can do that and it's so easy and intuitive to figure out. But the background remover that does come with Canva Pro is a huge pro to creating your mood board. There are other ways to remove backgrounds, but this is just the easiest way and I'm gonna show it to you exactly how I do it within Canva. Uh, I like to create a design. Usually I'll start with either a presentation, which is 16 by nine. So I did that similarly here with my first design. One thing I did mention that I started with was the rug here. So I started with the rug. I go through all of the furniture that I'm thinking about using in my space. Again, I start with that one major piece. Here it was the rug and I usually go and I either screenshot different furniture pieces from different stores or save the images. For example, if I go to target.com, normally I do have to screenshot and if you have a Mac, the screenshot quick function is command shift four. They were looking for a side table. Usually I look for backgrounds that are pretty bare. Most of the images for these products usually either have an all white background or a background that can easily be removed. I will get the image um, in full view and do a command shift four. So going back into Canva, I would go into the uploads function and upload files. I would highly encourage creating folders and being very organized when you're doing this. It'll make the process a lot smoother and it'll streamline the process as well. So if I go over to my desktop and I click on the screenshot that I just made and I click open, here I will just show you, I would edit the image and then I would hit remove BRG, remove background, and it will analyze the image and look for the main item in the image and remove the background around it. And as you can see, now the background has been completely removed and I'm free to move it around the space and it now has a transparent background where I can kind of layer it on top of other items. So there are items that I've already had in my space that I wanted to include in my space and keep in this design. And all I did was either find the original product or that image and remove the background, or I actually took physical pictures of the images, either against a white background or a background that didn't have too much going on behind it. And I was able to remove the background from those images. So starting here with the rug, I wanted to include the pieces in my space that I I already had in my space. So I removed the background for that bookcase that I found on Amazon, found the picture. It doesn't have all of the same decor that I have on mine specifically, but it gets the point across. I also added in the lamp. I believe this lamp I was able to pull directly from Target. I wanted to add a new light in the space. So there is this black light. The light originally was gold. I got the pendant light from Target, did a screenshot as well. It originally was gold. All I did was edit the image and I believe I changed one of these filters here to make it black because I really wanted a black light in the space as opposed to a gold lamp because I already had a gold lamp over here. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do and that was a DIY that I actually showed you guys in that video. Another thing that I did was add in the chair that I already had 
if you know, I actually switched this chair out. The chairs are very similar, so I didn't really include that in this design. I actually took a picture of the blanket that I already had on the back of the chair. And because the chair was pretty much white, I was able to remove the background. Um, I added in a pillow and then I started in with artwork. Now I had these three frames originally, but I knew I wanted to replace the colors and the color scheme. So I was working with the space that I already had, which was black and gold. I didn't end up going with this and I believe I changed the design a few times. And then I also knew that this was the couch that I really wanted to complement the rug. So I also wanted to tie in the smaller design pieces when it came to adding in the pillowcases. A lot of them come with white background images, which is perfect. Again, you can remove background and layer them on top of your, your couch so it looks exactly how it would look. And if you look at my apartment, this is exactly how it looks. I went through a few iterations when it came to coffee tables. I couldn't decide as to what coffee table I wanted. I know I wanted some kind of drum coffee table. I didn't know the color that I wanted. This was actually the last piece of furniture that I added to the space and it was the most difficult to pick. That was one of the coffee tables that I thought I would go with. This is a different one that I thought I would go with. I also went with this route. Some of the coffee tables look better than others, but I ended up going with this coffee table here. Now you'll notice this coffee table actually came with gold legs. I actually put it in with the gold legs and I didn't really love the color. But after I spray painted the legs, I took another photo, removed the background, and this is my actual coffee table in my home. And I layered some books that I actually, these are actual pictures that I took myself, layered them on top of the coffee table to see how it would look. And I was able to kind of see how it complements the, the pillowcase that I have there, as well as the sideboard that I also included in the space. And I did the same thing when it came to the sideboard. I added in pieces of decor and you'll notice like this is exactly how I have it set up in my home with the lamp, the mirror, uh, the accessories for the bar. I picked up these two pieces of artwork. These aren't the exact ones that I have in my home, but they are ones that I found online that I thought looked very similar. Okay, so if we wanted to start this design from scratch, for example, if we wanted to do a bedroom, I would typically start with either a wall color. So it's, for example, if I wanted, let's say a green wall, screenshot a small area of the image, then I would go into my design space and upload image, upload files and add it to my space. Again, you can kind of like maneuver it and shrink it as you see fit. So if we go in and let's say we were going into overstock and I wanted to find a modern black frame bed. I do like the look of this black leather bed and the accents there. So I'm gonna command shift four and uh, take a screenshot of the bed. And again, I wanna edit image and remove background. Now this could be tricky, but I feel like it'll handle removing the background pretty well. And it did, which is perfect. Zoom in on this image a little bit and line it up against that wall. If I wanna add some nightstands to the sides of it, I'll look for nightstands. Okay. So so here I love the way this looks, the gold trim and the black accents. I feel like this could work well in this space. And boom. Now, again, this isn't my best piece of work. Obviously you're missing sheets, maybe some additional things 
on the nightstands, but you can get an idea of what a space like this would look like just from picking out different pieces of furniture that you found on the, on the internet and you'll get an idea of whether they work together or not. So you don't have to be like an interior designer, but doing this process will kind of streamline everything and just make designing your space a lot easier. I hope this was helpful. I actually really like the design of the space and I might end up switching up my space at home. But yes, yeah, so again, I wanna thank Logitech for sponsoring a portion of this video and I wanna thank you guys for sticking with me. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Peace.